Summer learning loss is one of the single biggest factors contributing to what we traditionally call the achievement gap. Over the past few years, we've worked hard to maximize the opportunities for summer programs to advance every child's learning. To hear more about our summer school programs, I'm joined by Heather Schild, Director of High School Summer Learning and Elementary Teacher Eric Nelson. Heather, we've committed to really growing our summer school program over the past few years. Would you tell us a little bit about why we've done that and what we've accomplished so far? Right, so over the past few years specifically, we have wanted to get to a point where we have programming that meets student needs regardless of what those are. So we try to provide the most flexible environment that still mirrors the supports that we have in place during the regular school year. So for example, some of the things that have changed in the past few years are that we provide transportation for students to and from school. When students are in the building then for summer school, we have things like a full food service available for them just in case they are students who then have to go to practice or other commitments after summer school. Um, in terms of our classes that we offer, we have available to kids both classes that are core courses that they may need to get ahead or to make up for something that didn't go so well during the regular school year. And then we also have some new and different opportunities for kids that aren't offered during the regular school year. So it's kind of a draw to come and join us during the summer for those new things. Right. I think a lot of people who aren't familiar with our summer school program would be really amazed at the number of programs we have available to all of our kids. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's available programmatically for our elementary, junior high, and high school students. Eric, why don't you start with elementary? Yeah, at the elementary level, we have math classes and literacy, so we have reading and writing. Um, as previously mentioned, um, we have many leveled classes, so if a child fi finished above uh, grade level, they can take classes that will enhance and augment what they were doing. Um, and then if they finish below, we, they have classes that can kind of catch them back up and review some of the things that they learned. Um, if you have a budding author in your house, we have uh, a young authors class. Um, we have an inspired authors class as well. And then we also have a class that if your child likes to read, write, and run, we have a class called read, write, and run. <laughs> it's very aptly named. And they get to uh, do uh, reader's theater, uh, write scripts, and then they also get to do PE activities, which all kids love. Great. How about the secondary level? Um, so at the high school, we have <clears throat> courses that fall into what we refer to as the core four. So science, social studies, math, and English. And we have both elective options and then also very traditional classes. Like some of our more popular ones are algebra, geometry, US history, American government. Um, but then some new classes and some different opportunities that we have, we're offering a class called Intro to Printmaking this year that really helps our students who are fine arts students to grow a portfolio that has this unique class in it only offered during the summer because the equipment is so substantial for it. Um, we also have some blended opportunities for kids this year that haven't existed previously. Again, coming back to that flexibility that we're trying to meet student needs, um, whatever they look like over the summer. One of the reasons we've really expanded our summer school program was really to try to help us long term on helping to close those achievement gaps. How can summer school help do that? Right, so summer school <laughs> provides a unique opportunity. It's downtime for kids, and what we like about it is that you can take one or two courses instead of a full course load, and then on top of that, worry about working or a sport or whatever that you may be working on during the regular school year. So in the summer, it really gets down to that learning, and it can bridge that time over the course of the summer when other summer learning loss could potentially happen. So in the summer, we like it because the kids come in, they get down to it, and there's an environment of camaraderie there too where you're spending sometimes five hours in a room with other kids doing honors geometry or algebra one or whatever, and you develop these social and emotional connections to your peers, to your teacher, and then it makes the learning environment, I think, a little bit more effective for a lot of our kids. So you use the term summer learning loss. I want you to talk a little bit about that in kind of relationship to uh, the programs we have available to help support at-risk students. Mm -hmm. So especially for our kids coming in from eighth grade into high school, we have two bridge courses. Um, one is a reading course and one is um, an algebra essentials course. And so both of those specifically speak to exactly what you asked about, this potential for summer learning loss and preparation for high school. So what those do is they provide two hours a day of reading and two hours a day of math that teaches the prerequisite skills for that students would need in order to be successful in Algebra 1. So it really sets them up to be in the best place possible going into that class. Same thing with reading. If you aren't reading over the summer, 
then you tend to slide backwards a little bit in your comprehension. And so by bridging that gap over the summer, we really get kids set up in a good place for any class that requires reading. So social studies is a big one, obviously English class. Um, so in those particular classes, we really work to combat that. I think our community would be amazed at the number of programs that we have available uh, during the summer for our kids. What does a typical day look like? Sounds like summer school is a lot of fun. Um, it is, it is. And, and we do recognize it is summer. So we do, uh, while we obviously want the kids to learn, we want them to have fun as well. At the elementary level, we have that unique opportunity to pull kids in from a lot of different elementary schools. So you, you, there's that like added excitement, kids meeting each other the first week or two, um, new friends. Um, but. As far, we offer two sessions um, every, every day. So there's a, an early morning session, then there's a break, and then there's a um, kind of mid-morning session. I'd say the majority of the kids take advantage of both. So they might go to a math class, take about a half hour break, and then go to a reading class. Um, uh, as far as the actual classroom goes, we try to be as consistent as possible to their classroom. So we'll start with a mini lesson and, and a focus for the day break off into small groups, um, do some one-on-one -on -one differentiation for all the different students. Um, we do, I know I like to collaborate, collaborate with a lot of other classes as too. So we'll open up the walls and bring other kids in, maybe of different ability levels, so they're teaching each other. So there's just a variety of, of ways that the day goes. But um, I will say it goes very quick. That hour and a half flies by, and, and it's, it's interesting when I have to tell the kids, you have to leave, not you get to leave. <laughs> and that's really cool. When I'm turning shut lights off, like, guys, you really have to go because they are just so engaged in what they're doing. Right, sounds like a lot of fun. You know, I think um, historically there's this context or this thought about what summer school really is or the type of student uh, summer school is for. But it sounds like our programs are serving students of all kinds, mm -hmm. all levels of ability, and all areas of interest. Heather, talk a little bit about how and why parents are choosing to enroll their kids in summer school. So I mentioned earlier the fact that we're trying to get to a point where we mirror some of the, the access points of the regular school year. So parents, I think, have a lot of faith in the fact that we are doing that. Um, students who are English learners, for example, we have supports in place for that population of, of students. Uh, students who may have a 504, an IEP, we have a counselor and we have a learning behavior specialist for this particular population of students. Students who are on an honors track, we have support in place for that particular population. So really, it's kind of a choose your own adventure in summer school. Whatever your needs are, we have something to fit those. And parents see that and they see it as an opportunity. And I think kids do too. Even for our kids who are taking summer school because they didn't do so well during the school year, it becomes an opportunity with a really positive vibe to it. Like when kids are out in the hallways talking to each other, we don't have discipline problems. We don't have just silliness. It's generally a positive environment and kids like to come there. I, and it's strange for the high school to feel that way too, honestly, because you associate that kind of joy with going away once you get into high school classes, unfortunately. But really the kids come in and it's just kind of buzzing and mm -hmm. it, it feels good to walk in the doors every day. I genuinely enjoy it. So it sounds like summer school really is for any student, mm -hmm. for anyone. And for our families maybe watching at home, mm -hmm. what would you say to encourage them to, to have their kids come to summer school? Look at what we offer. Really, I think it'll surprise people. We have so many different course offerings, specifically this year, that didn't exist before. We have astronomy, we have some blended classes, we have Spanish, we have French, we have a variety of art classes, speech. And I think, too, because you just get to focus on one or two things, kids really dig in and can make the most out of that experience. Eric, for our kids who are saying, oh my gosh, not during summer, why would I want to go to summer school? Why would I be in school during the summer? Summer school is a lot of fun. Tell oh, us about that. Why, oh. What makes it so fun? We have so many, so many ways we make it fun. Um, you know, the, the, usually the weather's pretty nice, so you could find a class outside doing math on, a, on the um, blacktop with chalk. Um, I do a lot of relauds under a tree, or um, we'll do a novel study, and there's something that we could do outside with it, and we do that. In, in the school, the kids get to check out new books. Um, we do a lot of techno use technology, so we have our iPads and our Chromebooks. Um, in my math class uh, on Fridays, the kids try to break out of a virtual escape room using the math strategies that they use. And it is the most exciting thing ever. We put a timer up and you can just feel the buzz of excitement going through. Again, they don't want to leave, um, especially if they didn't escape. Um, and then reading, uh, 
instead of writing a normal book report, we might make an eye trailer. So they make a, like a Hollywood looking trailer about their book and then they get to show it to everyone. Read, write, and run, they get to do plays in front of their parents. Um, so honestly, I do think that the kids really enjoy coming. Mm -hmm. All right, Heather, Eric makes elementary school, summer school sound like a lot of fun. What about junior high or high school? What makes that fun? <laughs> um, it's funny because Central and North kids don't often see each other unless it's on the playing field or unless it's downtown Naperville and then they're just passing by each other. Now they're in classes together. And I think that that part of it is really enjoyable for them because they get to reunite perhaps with some kids they went to Kennedy with or they get to meet some new faces and see some people who are different or teachers who are different that they don't see all the time. And I think part of that too makes it safe for kids because they aren't just in classes with the same people over and over or taking risks in front of those same peers. It's a different peer group. You get to meet some new faces, to hang out, meet some new friends, and it's, it's a good time. Yeah. So why is it important for students of all ages and all interests and all ability levels to really think about summer school? Um, well, I think that as a, both as a teacher and a parent, we recognize there's a summer slide when kids are just like taking the two and a half, three months off. So I think if you're taking the three week or six week course at the elementary level, um, I have seen so much growth, even in the three week course, but even more in the six weeks, where the kids feel, I think the word is confidence to me at the end. I love when they walk out of there so excited about the next grade um, because they're just confident. Um, maybe the kids that were below have kind of felt like they've caught up. Uh, the kids that were above feel like they've enhanced their strategies. Um, and again, kids at the end usually are just so excited that they, they're, they're sad it's done, excited for the next school year. Parents say the same thing. They're really happy that their kids went through this and they know their kids are excited for the next school year and maybe in the past they weren't. What do we need to do to continue to grow the summer school program? We continue to become more and more flexible with the way that we look at summer school um, in order to meet student needs. So a goal that I have is to learn a little bit more about the students that are coming in and what they want or what they need. And that may be time flexibility, that may be course flexibility, that may be some different options for them. But I really, I pride us in the fact that we are responsive to the community and we're also as flexible as possible when it comes to providing ways for kids to learn and grow. Summer school in our district sounds amazing. I want to thank both Eric and Heather. Up next we'll discuss ways parents and caregivers can work with students outside of the classrooms over the summer months. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. Dan.